All right, welcome everybody. Um, this is a session about three scale and how to manage your API using Red Hat technologies. I'll wait for a couple of minutes before we start to uh, see more people if joining. Uh, we'll start in about a minute. Hey, uh, welcome everybody. Let's start the session. Um, my name is Faisal Masood. I am a labs architect and AI lead and work in the Red Hat APAC business unit. And today I'll be talking about how you can manage your microservices uh, with the help of Red Hat technologies. And we talk about different options. We talk about different patterns. And at the end of the presentation, I'll show you a working example, a working demo of how you can use these technologies together to bring value for your API. So first thing first, when you, when you define an API, uh, if they are based on domain-driven design or bounded context-based approaches, they are designed, your microservices are designed to be doing one thing and one thing in the right way. They are components based on a bounded context. The problem with that, they are very individual components and they cannot uh, generally show an end-to-end -end business workflow. For example, you have a login uh, business workflow that may come up with session handling, that may come up with uh, audit, that may come up with user profile and actual login functionality. They have four or five APIs there. They show individual components of an overall business workflow. So the idea behind um, managing API and exposing your API as a product is to connect your existing APIs to connect your new microservices and expose them as a one business workflow. Similar to in our brains, we have individual neurons. They cannot do much. They cannot represent much, but when they connect together, they do wonders. Same will apply to our APIs or microservices. When we connect them, they will provide business value for you for your consumers, for your partners, and ultimately your business. And this is this talk is all about how to connect your APIs together to make a product out of it. So once we think of an API internally, but when we want people to consume uh, the API, we want to expose it as a, as a product, as um, a thing that is solving a particular use case, that is solving a particular problem for the consumers. As I mentioned, the login. Login is a, is a product, for example, will give you single sign-on, but internally it may have five, six, seven APIs or uh, microservices working together. So once we expose um, our, uh, our functionality, our product to the customer, so we have a component on the left-hand side you see is called gateway. So this is where the API provide value uh, to expose your API as a product to your consumers, right? So we call it a north-south uh, service architecture pattern in which uh, the consumers and the clients comes to you, want to consume your API, and you have a gateway in the middle that provides um, lots of functionality. For example, it can provide API management capabilities. It can provide a catalog for people to come and search what is available uh, in your ecosystem. And it can provide security. Uh, it can provide analytics, how, how many people are accessing your API, what is the usage, how much I charge them. You can monetize your API. So all these uh, kind of components uh, comes with the gateway. 
um, and then that is we call it as a north south service architecture pattern so building on the north south service architecture pattern if you see here there can be different consumers um, of your api if you see on the top layer their api consumers it can be an affiliate or other business unit within organization it can be a website or mobile application that you have written as your own business or some third party have written for you APIs, and it can be a partner also. and you can apply different policies to each type of consumer it can be different analytics it can be different rate it can be different security it can be different uh, different way you are charging to them so all these things will give you capabilities. You have the same API backends at the bottom layer, but you expose them to your consumers in a different fashion. And that's a, that's a value of API Gateway that brings it to you. So people can use um, your uh, functionality in a, in, a, in, a, in a pattern that makes sense for them. So for example, uh, let's say you are a university and you have a student's data as an API. You may want to expose the student's data to your city's real estate agencies. So it, it makes easier for your students to find uh, real estate to live in while they're studying in, the, in your university. That can be one example. If you are a bank uh, with, with own open API initiatives, you may expose your products and white label them. So other big names who want to, ex, uh, who want to provide financial services, they can use your functionality your business your product and expose them as, as their own for example you can expose uh, my spending pattern and somebody can write and uh, further logic on top of it for example uh, put a map on that and see okay i spend mostly in the city i spend mostly in the coffee shops i spend mostly whatever so that way when you own the data you are ex you are exposing your data why your apis to different consumers in a different way an API gateway is the one that will bring on uh, all this, bring on the uh, bring on the bridge that will connect your consumers to your APIs. So that's number one thing is the north-south service pattern. The second pattern is okay. Well, I expose my API to my consumers. I know I bring analytics, security, and API catalog. How about my APIs need to talk to each other? to make a complete business workflow. So if you are coming from the API microservices background, you know in the microservices we say, uh, don't reuse your code, copy paste the code in different bounded context. So the question comes in, if, if we have some operational code, not the business code, but operational code, for example, logging, that is not tied up to any, um, any business uh, security, a tracing of my APIs. These are called operational code. So when we say don't uh, reuse the code in in terms of microservices, we talk about business level code. But operational code can and could be reused across microservices. So what what about, for example, I want to provide security to all microservices. Like I want to provide SSO. I want to provide uh, tracing via Spring Sleuth or Jaeger or Open Tracing. I don't want to copy paste the same code in all the microservices, right? So what people do, we used to do in the spring world, we have libraries, uh, the Netflix libraries, uh, like Ribbon, et cetera, for that. But now there's a pattern comes in in the Kubernetes world, it's called sidecar pattern, in which this operational reuse code is being injected to your container as a sidecar. Basically, you are reusing the operational code without focusing that while you're writing the, your own API. So when you write your API, you only focus on your business. You should focus on your business. And all the operational reusability, like as I mentioned, logging, tracing, security, like MR, mutual TLS, that comes from the sidecar. So Istio Mesh is one such provider that provides you uh, the common functionality, the operational functionality that microservice need. So it helps you connect, uh, find microservice each other, you, you can secure them by mutual TLS and you can observe by tracing. So this one is what we call East-West services pattern. When the, when the call comes from microservice to microservice, it's still not exposed and as, as a product to your consumers, but when they're calling each other, uh, we need to provide uh, some functionality um, as I mentioned before. 
So, is, so that is uh, what we call the second pattern. It's called East-West service pattern. And here you are basically managing your microservices. And the answer for uh, that particular software component is service mesh, which provides you all this functionality. So two things we talked about. One is uh, gateway in the north-south pattern, API management, and the east-west uh, pattern, managing your microservices. So when we talk about API management, uh, there are service, we talk about service mesh. There's something service mesh can do, but there are some overlap in between. You can see from this diagram, there, for example, rate limits, uh, both can provide. And sometimes it makes uh, our cons uh, people can question, you know, should do, do I need both? Do I need one? What do I need? So one way to look at is to see what kind of targeted audience uh, they are serving the use for. For example, API management mostly uh, talk about provider and consumer. When you want to um, provide a uh, like a portal for developer, you want to monetize, uh, you want to define the contracts in the right way. So that's API management is a key area. Similarly, service mesh is, is more targeted toward developers and dev of, devs of engineers. They are all about connecting microservices to make a complete business workflow. Right. And then there are something uh, it's in, in, in the application is integration stack, you know, uh, which, which Red Hat has a camel and fuse uh, uh, products there that can provide you the integration. So today we will mostly will focus on the API management and the and the service mesh bit. Okay, so now we understand what API management provides and we understand what service mesh provides. Let's understand how Red Hat can help you out in both these spaces uh, and how the architecture would look like. So irrespective if you have a traditional architecture which is on the left hand side or you have a microservice architecture. You can still expose your API if you see the top layer via a product called three scale API management. It can provide you developer portal, it can provide you analytics, it can provide you authentication, irrespective of the type of architecture you have, traditional or microservices. If you have microservice architecture and you want to manage your hundreds and thousands of APIs, uh, use our operational reuse for your all of your APIs. Then we have a product called Istio Service Mesh, which is a uh, next level to the microservice architecture block. And it can provide on call of uh, traffic control. Uh, it can provide observability. It can provide um, authentication authorization internally also. So these two components fit uh, in your all our architecture in that way. They have a well-defined role and the target a well-defined area, providing the capabilities that suits your need. And all these definitely run on, on Red Hat OpenShift, which is our uh, number one hybrid cloud platform. So let's, uh, next slides, uh, what I'm, I'm gonna talk about is uh, dig a little deeper on the API management bit, which is a uh, three scale, I don't understand the components. Um, and then when we go there, we'll see how the overall flow of the traffic flow works. So once you talk about uh, three scale API management, on the top, uh, what we call it as um, a configuration or administration um, kind of component in our three scale API management. That provides you to, uh, to provide a developer portal where people can come and search for your APIs they can see the signature of your APIs. It provides an admin portal also, where you define, uh, for example, your analytics. You can see your analytics, you, you define your policies, uh, you define integrations. So that's a component where you manage the configuration of your um, API gateway. The second component that we talk about is in the bottom section, which is a policy enforcement point. So policy enforcement point is the engine that actually sits between uh, the developer, uh, the consumer of your apps and provider of your apps. So as, as an API provider, you, ha you have written an API backend that provides a functionality and consumer, which is the developer, want to reuse your API. So the policy enforcement point is a very, um, uh, is, is a low latency component that sits between that connection 
and apply all the policies that you define from the API manager section. So there are two components of three scale. One is defining the policies. And the second one is, which is we are saying the policy enforcement point is applying those policies. Let me see how, how many time. Applying those policies, okay. Uh, so when, you, when we talk about API gateways, uh, you can run your policy in enforcement points in different you can run on the cloud uh, a hosted way you can run an open shift uh, you can run on any container in on any other platform if you like um, you can run you can mix the three scale uh, policy enforcement point with istio also to provide you the benefit of both and that's that's a key that Red Hat provides is they we integrate the three scale and it's due together to bring both uh, the capabilities of both platforms to you as a single API management platform. Uh, similarly, but uh, the way we understand the diff two different components of three scale API management, let's under understand the components of a service mesh ecosystem. So service mesh has uh, four or five different areas in it. Um, of course, we call it Istio. It's an Istio open source project based on that our uh, Istio Red Hat's Istio service mesh is based on. Um, the first thing is observe. If you see on the left hand side, you want to see if a call comes for, uh, let's say, your login API and your login API call your session management. It calls your notification API. You want to see when the, when the login call comes in, how much time is it take there? How many other services it has called? And how much time? Uh, what's the latency in calling other uh, other child or downstream microservices? So that's we call it observability. So it is a it is a it is a reusable pattern that is available as a sidecar via Istio. Similarly, uh, uh, we can do connect. Uh, connect it means like when when one API login API want to call the service mesh API because Istio sits in the middle. So you can control what API call another API and what kind of security you want to put in that. You, you can put, uh, for example, mutual TLS, uh, you can put basic auth, or you can put network level control with Istio. And of course, via Prometheus and Grafana, you can, you can view the metrics of all your API, again, because Istio sits in the middle. It's a policy enforcement point, which actually tracks all the traffic, goes through it, and it provides all these capabilities for us to better manage our microservice ecosystem. Um, let's go a little bit deeper into how service mesh works like that. So you have a service A, if you see on the, in the middle part of the screen. So what it does, whenever it wants to have an outgoing or incoming traffic, it cannot go on its own. It proxy everything via sidecar uh, called NY proxy. It's a very high performance, low latency proxy that has all the policies that you define in the bottom section. So think of the bottom section where we have Mixer, Pilot, Delhi, and uh, uh, Kitadel is defining your policies. Similarly, in the, in the three scale uh, where we have an area where you can define your policies. Here also we have a component. Uh, we call it a control plane, which actually uh, provides you uh, a, a component where you can manage all the policies, define all the policies. And when you define the policies, it will get pushed to your NY sidecar to individual services for which you define the policies. That is called the data plane. So what it does, every NY has a local policy cache. It doesn't need to go to the, to the, to the control plane to fetch the policies. Um, and then it just keep on applying the policies. It can be, uh, as I mentioned, it can. Uh, so when service A want to call service B, the call will come to NY, the outgoing call. So NY will record, okay, I'm originating a call from service A to B, and this is the timestamp, so it can provide uh, tracing. Now NY, when it tries to call service B, the, the NY proxy for service B actually intercepts that call. It's just a gatekeeper. They say, okay, I receive a call, okay, where where is my security policy? Do I need MTLS? Do I need a, uh, do I need authentication and apply all these policies? And based on that, it can decide to forward the request to service B or reject at this level. So when you are coding your microservices, you keep your focus on the business domain, 
and operational reusability components will be provided to you by the Envoy Proxy. Um, so there are two components we already talked about, north-south, east-west. North-south is three scale, east-west is Istio. How we can merge them together in a way they can provide one awesome API management platform is running on, on, on OpenShift. So you can, just as a reminder, from three scale, you provide, uh, yeah, you provide uh, developer onboarding, you provide analytics. And with Istio, you distributed tracing, uh, whitelist, or mutual TLS. So if you see on the bottom part of this screen, there's a three scale mixer adopter. That's uh, Red Hat has worked on this particular adopter. And what it does, it's actually allowed to apply policies defined by three scale to Istio specific traffic. So, so basically it's provided an integration point by which you can use three scale to define what three scale define best and apply them while your traffic has been managed uh, through Istio gateways. So three scale adapter is the glue that actually provides uh, these, two, uh, these two components for them. And again, as, as I showed you in the, in the architecture before, uh, you can use three scale on its own if it makes sense for you. If you don't have the other requirements, you can use three scale. You can use Istio on its own. But if you want to use uh, these two together, there's an option available for you. Uh, so so make a, a to, to make an API management platform that can provide everything that you can see on the left hand side of the slide. So um, the the bottom line is if you are running Kubernetes. If you are running Red Hat OpenShift, uh, we have components, uh, we have solutions that can fulfill all of your requirements when it comes to manage your API. It, either it can be via Istio, either it can be via 3 scale, or it can be a combination of both. When you think about running your uh, services on Cube or Red Hat OpenShift, uh, you can Think about three scale and Istio that will provide a solution for whatever you need. Uh, you want to expose your API as a product. You want to manage your APIs. We have a component that will uh, serve that need for you. And Istio is a very active product uh, project actually, uh, and it's being built. And uh, there are lots of committers to that. Uh, there's a gRPC support. There's a HTTP2 support. So as as the ecosystem grow, as the new web technologies comes in we will see that the benefits uh, of using this platform will keep you up to date uh, in your roadmap or uh, in the in your future whatever technologies you want to use so that's that's just the two things i want to convey about what we have in our platforms um, what we work with our platforms and how um, they, they they can work together to provide you a single platform while you manage your apis so uh, the next part is the demo. Uh, so there'll be basically two parts of the demo. One part is where I'll show you the three scale API management. Think of it as a traditional architecture that I talked before. So you have some sort of API respective with microservice or monolith, doesn't matter. You have some sort of APIs that are running somewhere. It can be on OpenShift or it can be anywhere else. But you want to manage those APIs why three scale to provide the capabilities like uh, analytics, uh, developer portal, some sort of security. So that will be the first part of the demo um, that, that I'll showcase to you. The, the second part of the demo would be, um, we'll show you how you can combine Istio with three scale. So we have a set of microservices running on OpenShift. And first, we'll show you how you can manage it by Istio, the different components of Istio, like Kiali to visualize, to define, uh, like Jaeger to provide tracing and to end tracing uh, for your microservices. And then we'll show you how the three, uh, three scale can be integrated with um, the Istio service mesh. So you can still apply some policies from the three scale admin portal. So that will be the second part of it. Uh, I have uh, colleagues here uh, to answer your questions. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type in uh, in, the, in the question window. And after this session, uh, we have uh, lots of experts available in the Red Hat booth. 
So I encourage you guys to visit the Red Hat booth and ask specific questions. We have many more people there that can help you answer your queries uh, to your more specific questions if you have. So I'm going to show, start with the demo, um, and then we'll uh, take some questions towards the end. Okay, so just give me a second. Let me see how how I can expose my demo. All right. See, um, get green. Uh, three scale API management. Just put a uh, put a comment. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, so uh, let's start with uh, the three scale uh, bit, the first component of the demo, in which I'll show you how we can apply policies via three scale. Now, this is the three scale admin portal. Uh, remember the, the slide in which we say we have an admin component where you define the policies, uh, where you uh, provide a place for your developers to log in and find your APIs, understand how your APIs looks, and uh, manage all from there. So this is your your three scale um, your three scale portal. Uh, for this uh, for this particular part of the demo, um, we have um, we have created a dummy microservices which is running on our um, uh, on our separate component called microx is some similar to wire mock in which we have mock microservices running so i'm going to use uh, the books microservice for forward slash books in which you will see how we can apply policies to that particular microservice so this microservice can run anywhere open shift non-open shift traditional non-traditional whatever but we can still manage it from the three scale that's the first part of our demo um, Let's start with the with the three scale. This is the three scale admin GUI, and what you see here is a thing called products, right? So there, when when you talk about using three scale and exposing your API as a product, so we use the same language. Three scale is using the same language here. Uh, I have two products. Uh, one is a simple called API, and the second one is a books. Let's say I want to expose my books API for people to consume and do stuff with that. So that's uh, that is my books API. Um, I define as as a product, and people can come and consume uh, that particular um, uh, product from my um, offerings. So let's go to the overview section of um, my books API. Now you can see here this is the dashboard of the books API, in which I say a, a three scale has a concept of uh, called plans. You can have different plans for application like gold tier or, or like a free tier or for example, um, like platinum tier. You know, you can you can provide free tier for first 500 or 100,000 calls, whatever. And you can charge additional if you are going you, you are going up on your tiers. OK, so that is the application plan. And then when you expose an application, you expose an API, you associate that API with the plan. So I have an unlimited plan, which is uh, I'm not going to charge you to use my APIs only for today. And then uh, I have an application that is actually uh, connected with this plan, and you can use uh, this application. So let's go a little bit more into the, to the application bit. Uh, I have a books application. And then I go to books application. Uh, so you can see on the on the left hand side we have a thing called integration here we we configure um, all of our sorry about that here we configure all of our um, application how it's behave what the security is going to use and what backend is going to use so i have a defined something called backends first and this backend is basically defining my mock server so i just want to expose whatever is defined in this URL via this application. So this is the microx is my actual business API and books is my product. And I want to expose the actual business API as a books book product. So that's my backend. You can you can add multiple backend here uh, with different public paths. So you can uh, mix and match and see how people can consume from a single place if you have different APIs. Then what I did is, um, Let's go to settings. So here what we did is 
uh, we say, okay, it's a three scale managed system because we are just using three scale at the moment. Uh, these are our staging and production URL. If somebody want to use, uh, they will hit this URL and that will the API, uh, the policy enforcement point will apply the policies and forward the call to my uh, business packet. Uh, I, I provide authentication based on the user key. I can have different combination here if I want. It can also do a single sign on via Red Hat single sign on or key cloak. You can provide JWT authentication or other form of authentication if you have. Uh, the name of the user key for key, I'll take it as a query parameter. And then you can see there are more definitions here. For example, if uh, if uh, authentication failed, I'll, the user will see this response. Uh, if the authentication missing, the user will see different response. So all this configuration to exposing my API is here. So these are operational things, right? So the the, the business have written their API, the actual core of the books, um, business information encapsulated in the API and all the configuration I'm managing here to make sure that uh, uh, that works. So that's that's number one thing. Now let's see if we want to uh, try accessing our APIs. Okay, so I already have uh, in Postman. Let me just show you my Postman. So if you can see, you guys can see my Postman here. This is the URL we talked about, Books 3 Scale. This is our URL and this is the user key. And I just want to access my API. Now my API actually hosted on the uh, on the mock system of uh, Mic Rocks, right? But we are exposing as a product and applying some policies via three scale. So when I hit that, it will hit the policy enforcement point. It will apply all the policies. Everything is successful. It will forward it to the backend and give me back the response, right? So if I uh, if I click on send, uh, fingers crossed, it's uh, it's a live demo. It uh, so it works. So you can see here, I got all the responses for my books API. I got all the list of my books. Okay. So what I want to show here is now, if you see, uh, and this is intentional, if you see uh, the response headers for this particular URL is uh, the content type is text plain, right? I I, I don't want this to be text. It's, it's a JSON format, right? I I I, I want it to be uh, it to be rendered in a in a, in a JSON-like way for uh, so that I can see what's going on with 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 my response, right? It's a simple policy I want to add, but somehow the application is coded to send you uh, as a text. So I'll show you now in three scale how you can change this behavior without affecting uh, without affecting your business API, which is the backend, and you can apply different uh, settings in your uh, why your three scales here. Okay, so let's go back to three scale. Uh, you go to policies. Uh, here we apply all the policies to to our um, to our books API, and we have only one policy here, like three scale API cast. It means the policy enforcement point is in the middle. Okay, so what I do, I added a header modification policy. Let's see what this policy is. What I say is for the response. Um, Create the header when not set, replace otherwise. So irrespective if the backend API is sending me this header or not, I want to overwrite. The header name is content type, okay? And then what I did, I just added this hard-coded value. Instead of application text or plain text, I added application slash JSON. So what it does, it will inspect the payload that's coming back from your backend API because this is a response header. You can do with a request header also, and will overwrite the header for you so it can render um, a bit prettier uh, for the demos. So I apply, the, I say, okay, this is my policy, um, and then uh, I enable this policy. Um, I just say save. I update my policy chain. Now the good thing about it, it will not immediately get applied because you can make mistake. You want to test your policy chain before applying. So what three scale does, if you can see here, it actually updates uh, a work in progress kind of icon on the left hand side, right? So what it means, it is telling me, hey, you have some updated policy in the in the in the configuration in the management section, but that policy has not been applied or not been fetched or pushed to the policy enforcement point. So I say, okay, um, thank you for informing us for informing that. I'm gonna apply to staging first if you have a staging environment. I don't have any staging environment at the moment. So after I apply it to staging, then I can promote it to production. So I click on uh, promote to production and there's new policy 
in which all the headers for this particular API will be overwritten by three scale from text plane to application JSON is, is promoted to my three scale. Now, the, what, what the API manager would do is take these policies and push them to policy enforcement point, which is the high performance component applying all the policies. All right, so now let's see if I make a call again, fingers crossed, um, hopefully it works. Yay, so you see the output comes in JSON now. So even though the business uh, is still focusing and is still working on the way it is, I apply the different policies here to, to change the behavior for different consumers, right? One consumer might, may want JSON, one consumer may want uh, text plane, one consumer may want something else. So we want to make sure that all these operational uh, kind of capabilities are uh, are not a concern for your business API. It's a concern for your API management bit. Okay, so that's that's all we did here uh, for the for the first bit. Now, if I'm accessing the same uh, same uh, URL, let's say with uh, with a key that is not valid, that's a security bit that we put, uh, and then you can see the response we should get is uh, authentication failed, right? And then if I if I don't put the the user key all together. I just hit it before that. It's just the authentication par parameter is missing. So rem remember, like I showed you these two responses we talked about. These are the four or three responses that we configure them in three scale. So if you can have authentication parameter missing, if you don't put a parameter, and if you put a parameter but it's not valid, you can still get four or three, but you get different messages. Okay. So let's make a few more calls so that one more component of um, okay now let's go to three scale so this one um, just I, I, I want to go to again the settings to explain you how how we have controlled uh, this bit from here um, so if you see um, if authentication failed then the authentication failed message is here and if, um, if the authentication is missing then the authentication parameter missing message is here so you can also control that kind of things uh, to, to, to tell your different uh, different consumers in a different way. You can have different products uh, having the same backend API, but different policies applied uh, to that level. Other thing I want to just focus on is the three scale provides you very many policies. First, let me disable this um, just, just to make sure that we go back to the original situation. I again disable this policy. Um, when the policy is applied, Three scale said, okay, there is something need to be changed. I went there, I quickly promoted again to my staging. I'm staging at the moment, so I promoted production. Okay, so when you go to policies, and I, if I say, I want to add a new policy. So there is a list of policies here. You can do OAuth based, OIDC OAuth two based, uh, um, single sign on. You can integrate it with Red Hat SSO for authentication. That can integrate with your enterprise authentication in your organization. Uh, you can do course. Uh, if you guys understand course, how course work, you can do course handling. You can do lots of things. You can do logging. You can do uh, TLS termination. So there are many, many things here available for you to apply different policies. And chances are, you uh, whatever your use case are, will be fit by one or a combination of these policies. Not only you can use a, a vast, vast list of policies that comes with three scale, you can write your own policy if there's a, if there's a need come to. So that's 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 about the policy bit. How how much information you can manage um, with your API. The second bit I want to showcase is a thing called Active Docs. As as I said, you know it provides you a developer portal where people can go and uh, find your API. So you have basically APIs here. So think of it as a central place. If you have hundreds of APIs managed by different teams in, in your organization, you want to make sure that um, if somebody want to consume, you have a central place where they can search and see and trial your APIs to improve the consumption of your APIs. It can be internal, can be external, and it depends on that. So we have an act, uh, we have a developer portal where developer can log in and update their APIs and people who are buying those products like books can go and check for this API and see if it takes makes sense for them or not. So this is a simple uh, swagger based upload that the developer did. So you can basically see what's going on. But the key here is you can add custom information here. 
and you can make it searchable so people can come and search for APIs in a single place, a single portal, and that will improve uh, the consumption of your APIs. The second bit that API management, the third bit the API management provides, and I want to show uh, to this audience is uh, the analytics bit, right? So we we make some calls. We want to make sure that the calls had been tracked, and we can see um, we can improve and we can adjust our offering based on on the calls. Um, so if you see from the traffic uh, section is. Uh, the calls that I made uh, just now, it's here. Like I made a few calls, around eight calls this morning before the session. I just tried everything, so I made some hundred calls. So you can see the number of calls. You can you can filter on different combinations and see see how it goes. You can see the response codes also for uh, for the calls um, that we're doing here, uh, 200 or 400 or 5 xx. So we have some numbers, so you can see that's also uh, captured here. Um, there are some integration errors also. For example, if you put invalid key here, so to tell you, okay, these keys are invalid, or the user have tried uh, this kind of combination, and you can see because we have tried many times with this key, uh, one two three one three, so it records that. It can tells you, okay, uh, someone has tried with the invalid key, and you can see uh, how we want to further investigate that particular uh, use case. Uh, you can combine with like uh, hourly averages, daily averages, uh, with your with your application and understand uh, the pattern of how your API has been uh, consumed. So when you go to overview of your application, you can see one single view in which you have analytics, uh, you have plans, uh, you have applications, and you have a developer portal on the, uh, on the left-hand side. So these are, uh, these are the capabilities that 3Scale provides to you to manage your API irrespective of your architecture. It can be traditional, or it can be a microservice-based architecture. So that's the first part of the demo um, in which I showed you um, how 3Scale can be used to, to manage um, your APIs. The second part of the demo is basically um, in which uh, we are going to talk about um, how 3Scale and Istio can work together and how they can provide you a, a single solution in which you, if you want to manage your traffic uh, east, uh, east, west, managing microservices, Istio is your solution. If you want north, south, uh, three scale is your solution. How they can work together uh, to provide a single, um, single platform for you, everything running on the Android and OpenShift platform. So what I did here is basically I provide a, another, uh, another, another product called API, which is based on integration with the Istio running um, in, in my OpenShift cluster. Okay, so let me first set the context. Uh, so I have a, in my, this is my OpenShift cluster. And in my cluster, I, I deployed my microservices with a thing called book info. Uh, you have different, uh, sorry, you have different kind of um, application or microservices running here. You have a product page that will render the whole page for you. And this product page is actually uh, may call the details API. It may call ratings API. It, can, it may call different uh, versions of the different API. But I want to keep the focus on the product page is what we do is product page is think of it is my API. This, this product page is calling different APIs together. So that's a east and west call. When product call details or product call ratings or ratings call reviews, whatever the way they call it, there's an internal call. That's an east and west call. So we are, we are gonna manage all these things via Istio. But somebody, when I want to expose uh, my, when I want to expose uh, my API as a product, that is the product page. I want consumers to come to this page that's providing a single holistic view uh, of the solution I'm offering. So that page will be exposed uh, using a north-south uh, pattern and will expose this uh, Y3 scale. So Istio will still be able to serve it, but the policy control for this particular page will be managed by 3 scale. And then I'll show you both the components of it, the Istio bit, which is uh, east-west, and the 3 scale bit, which is north-south. So first thing first, uh, if you remember from the service mesh uh, uh, slide, it has it provides your component called uh, Kiali, which actually help you visualize 
how your microservices are tied together in an east-west kind of pattern. So you see here we have a product page that is calling the ratings page and maybe it's calling the view and details page, right? So first, um, that's it. Let's go to, uh, I'll explain it to Kiali um, for that. Let me first make a call so that we have something, I uh, have something to show you. And I'll explain you this a bit more after I'll show you. Okay, so let's go to Kiali again. And here, what you see here is, let me just do one more. Let me do the a bit old one. Okay, so you can see here, we have a product page here. The product page is calling a details microservice internally. So what this Kiali does is basically, help us uh, visualize how the service are connected together. So how does how does it find all this information? We didn't we didn't tell him, OK, products is basically calling details or our product is calling reviews and reviews is calling ratings. We didn't tell uh, any of this information. The key is the NY proxy. This is the one it is in the middle of all the traffic for every component. So when the product page want to talk to details, it doesn't go directly. This guy goes to Envoy, which is running as a sidecar. So Envoy record everything here and then give it to us so we can visualize. Then when the Envoy send a traffic for details, it doesn't hit details directly. It will hit to the Envoy proxy running for the details uh, service. And then from there it consumes, okay, I have received a call. I'm going to record it so people can visualize, people can review, and then forward the call to actual API. So the key to all these, uh, the coolness around how we can introspect, uh, how we can visualize our product is basically the NY proxy. And you can see from here, we have product page. There are some errors here because I'm testing different combinations. Um, it has uh, calling details, and you can see in an end-to-end -end combination of your uh, a business flow. So the product page is the business flow. And what it does, it actually helps you uh, try to find the dependency with each other. So Kali um, does all these capabilities for you. It can give you, for example, some sort of analytics. Um, three scalar also provides similar, uh, uh, 200 calls, 400 calls, etc. When you uh, start with the applications, so if you remember, we have a book info application I talked about. So we have we have a product page, uh, which calls details, ratings, and reviews. Similarly, uh, when you go to workloads, it tells you how many uh, how many pods of your APIs are running in the cluster, which is managed by Istio. So you can see we have multiple versions of reviews. Uh, we have single versions for ratings, sing similarly single version for product, and single version for detail version. So you can this it is basically provide your introspection capabilities and how your your services are are are, are tied together. And they're providing a value um, for you. That's the first bit that Scali can um, and can help you out. Okay. Now let's see how we we integrate this um, with the three scale. So if you come to three scale, I have a product called API, and if you remember from the integration bit, here is the settings which tells you what kind of policy enforcement point we need. So from here, when you click on settings. Um, for your API product, you see the policy enforcement point is Istio. It's not API, uh, three scale API managed anymore. It's Istio. It means the policy enforcement point is provided by Istio. So three scale adapter mixer actually takes all these policies and apply it. So you define the policies is still in three scale, but the adapter mixer is the one which helps to you to configure and apply these policies and capture the traffic and push it back for the three scale for viewing. That's a key bit here. You tell, you tell, um, uh, you tell basically um, uh, three scale that the policies is managed by Istio. Okay, uh, that, that's 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 one bit. The other bit is when you go to Istio. Uh, for example, Istio is, is is running in this OpenShift cluster. You go to Istio, and you define a thing called handler. So I define a handler called API days for today's session. And this handler, so here what you see here is a connection between three scale and Istio. Okay, three scale said, okay, Istio is the one who's gonna manage, right? But how come, how the 
Istio knows where the three scale is running, what kind of product I'm going to be using. There are multiple products here, right? So if you go to this product, uh, the API product, it has some configuration here which we'll be using. So we have to configure Istio to connect to three scale so they can work together. So that has been done by the handler object. Okay. So I define a handler object called API days here. And what you, uh, what so it's a good old, good old YAML. And what it does here, we define our three scale uh, location here. This is three scale admin, uh, basically URL. Uh, this is the service access token for three scale. And this is the service ID, which is basically the name of our product. So if you go to three scale here, you see this is our product. Is defined as number two. So if you want to do a connection between uh three uh, sorry istio uh and three scale you're telling istio uh dude this is my three scale configuration you are going to work with okay so that's that's the key bit that provides integration between these two and if you see from the parts here we have this three scale istio adapter running that's uh that's a bit that provides the bridge between these two parts of the component so they can work together so I come here, um, I say the integration is uh, basically three uh, Istio based integration. That's a very simple one. Uh, and then we have some mapping rules. Uh, I, I, I put a slash product page. And if, if somebody hits slash product page, it will be able to serve back to our product page API. Um, here again, we have the similar thing in the analytics. You have daily average, hourly average, uh, integration errors, and etc. So all these uh, all these analytics uh, capabilities of three scale, uh, the the policy uh, uh, capabilities of three scale with Istio, uh, and uh, the active docs capability, the the documentation of your API, that's all are managed from three scale. Right? So once we define that, you can go to overview here. Uh, you can see here again, I created two plans for this uh, demo. Basic plan is also basically an unlimited plan. I have two applications associated with that. Uh, let's see what applications they are. Um, one is uh, the books and one is the developer app. So let's see the books one. So you see the books API, which has a, this um, kind of user uh, key credentials, which is the one which will help us to, to call our backend API, okay? Let's see if we call the backend API. So this is uh, this is a three scale um, and is two integration. Now you see here here we are not hitting uh, the three scale GUI. We are hitting the 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 load balancer or the ingress point of Istio. Okay, these are this is the this is the major difference here. So Istio is still providing you the in ingress point for that as compared to the other one where three scale actually provides the ingress point. Now here, Istio is, is your, your main person who actually receives the traffic, and then it will use the three scale adapter mixer to apply policies uh, or apply configuration defined uh, via three scale. So you can see here, I put uh, ingress, I, I'm just using product page. Uh, I put a user key and I hit a send button. And once I send button, you can see it, it actually send me the uh, the simple bookstore app page, which is the product page we are talking about. So this is the, it's actually a web page that you can render on the browser, but I want to show you here how uh, you can use it as, as an API also. So this is the web page you're using, and this web page calls other um, components, for example, uh, for example, uh, ratings, reviews, and details. Um, and all this is managed by Istio and 3SK. And similarly, if we call our um, English gateway with the invalid key, uh, you can see here it will uh, provide you permission denied or whatever message you configure for that particular use case. So, so you are exposing your APIs as a product now, uh, managed by Istio and 3Scale together using 3Scale. That's also you can do everything in is running on OpenShift. Uh, definitely the book info, uh, which I showed you here, um, that can run anywhere you want. But the three scale is running on OpenShift for this demo, and Istio is also running on 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 uh, this OpenShift version for this particular demo. So we have seen the Kali one. Now let's see how we want to see the tracing, how the tracing works, uh, because service mesh another 
promise of service mesh is actually stress the calls because remember envoy proxy is in the middle of all the calls, right? So it takes the call, records something, and forward it to other envoy proxy, and that information is very, very valuable for us, right? So if you go to Jaeger, uh, so you can see when I say product page info, I want to uh, see what's happening with my product page, which is running inside the book info, um, and I just find some traces. So traces means it's called tracing whenever the call comes in how other calls had been called uh, via this particular uh, page. It traces all the things. The first call, if you see here, comes to Istio English Gateway. Give me a second. And then uh, it calls Istio Mixer, which is our three scale adapter, and it calls the product page, right? The second call API, it goes to Istio English Gateway, go to uh, three scale adapter and product page and reviews book info. If I click on here, you can see here that when somebody uh, asks for a product page, they come via Istio Gateway. You can see from here, this is our Istio Gateway. Then it go to product page, okay? Then what happens, the Istio Mixer come into picture, all right? And it's only taking like 6.23 milliseconds. It applying all the policies and all the things that you define. So you can you can you can trace your calls between one microservice or you can trace your call between multiple microservices. Product page call details, product page call review, and uh, actual user call product page. So all this configuration and combination you can get via the Istio. Uh, that comes out of the box via Jaeger UI and Jaeger tracing, and that comes within. Um, within the Kiali ecosystem. You can see here, when you click on distributed tracing, this actually opens this Jaeger UI for you. So you can see, you can manage your, your APIs, you can trace your API, you can introspect, you can go into details and understand what your APIs are doing. So that was um, the demo until now. Uh, we have a few minutes remaining. Um, I'll take questions if you have any. Um, if you're tired for all the talking that I've been doing, uh, you're welcome to go to a virtual booth and ask questions there. Just give me a second. Let me uh, stop our presentation here. Uh, there's a question uh, from uh, Fubudu about uh, three scale uh, adapter support. Yes, uh, three scale adapter, uh, right? Uh, and because you know the Istio is moving from a microservice to a fast monolith, it will move from multiple components like mixer or Kitadel to Istio D. And when that comes in, uh, Red Hat will provide support for mixer. So in the wrong term, yes, uh, as Tom, I also answered your question. Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, any other questions you guys have for this, uh, for this particular talk? Okay, if, if, uh, if there are no more questions, um, I'll give you one minute back of your life to enjoy a bit more. Um, and thank you for my talk again. Uh, go to Red Hat Virtual Booth. If you have any questions, we have experts there that can provide you more detailed knowledge uh, and more detailed subjective response to your queries. Uh, thank you very much.